I'm Mark Gagan and you're listening to the Voice of Insurance podcast, produced in association with Advantage Go. Release your underwriters to underwrite with Advantage Go's underwriting platform. Today we're doing something completely different. We're going to try to look into the future. In this episode, none of the people we're going to talk to are senior insurance leaders. But they might be the insurance leaders of the future. We in insurance know that we're not likely to be at the top of young people's wish lists when it comes to a future career. But it's only recently, as we've focused more on talent gaps, that we've started to do something about remedying this problem. That's where today's episode comes in. There's a wonderful talent accelerator business called Startup Sherpas that goes out and engages with young people via paid work experience cohorts that are funded by industry. These projects, which take 100 young people each, are called super squads. Last summer, Allianz, Aviva and the London Market Group, the LMG, sponsored one of these super squads and three of today's guests are graduates of that scheme. Startup Sherpas calls them Sherpies. In that super squad project, the Sherpies were asked to come up with ideas to help the insurance sector better get the attention of young people and make them more likely to think about a career in insurance. The Sherpies came up with a huge number of ideas and these were whittled down to the best, three of which you're going to hear about today from their creators. Howden Ventures and its insurer innovation partners are sponsoring the next Super Squad, and it was the head of Howden Ventures and recent Voice of Insurance guest, Tom Hode, who was the person who got me involved. Today's recording happened a few weeks ago in the Lloyd's Lab. At a live event, I chaired in which the Sherpies from the first Super Squad pitched their ideas to an audience of industry people. I grabbed five minutes with the presenters, Chelsea Abili, Aman Patel and Funta Onlerawaju, just before they went on stage. But first I spoke to Dan Wiley, Managing Director and Chief Operating Officer at Startup Sherpas, to set the scene. Enjoy this very different podcast. Dan, welcome to The Voice of Insurance. Thanks, Mark. Really, really pleased to be here. Well, we're doing something really different today. I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be quite exciting. You're from a business called Startup Sherpas. Tell us very briefly about that and then Set the scene for what you've done all the work that has led to what we're about to hear from three teenagers Absolutely. Uh, and their relationship with insurance. So yeah. set the scene. So Startup Sherpas are a social enterprise and we're on a mission to try and create a generation of innovators who have the skills to solve the biggest problems that the world is going to face. And the way we do that is by providing young people with paid work experience opportunities. And we create these work experience projects that last for six weeks. They do 24 hours worth of work over the course of those six weeks. And we describe these projects as a time machine, essentially, because the next best thing to a time machine is to get into the minds of the next generation. Because they are the future. They are the future. That's right. And what we're trying to do is to, one, have an impact from a social mobility perspective by actually paying young people for their time. Their time is valuable. Their insights are valuable. And we're making sure that we're putting a price on that and creating value out of that. But also we're getting that raw perspective. You know, what happens so often is as industries, we filter ourselves. The more ingrained in an industry we get, the more filtered we become. So so what we want is to bring these raw insights out from young people. And these projects are amazing for that. And that's why we think that they really are a time machine, because we're just getting straight to that sort of future thinking. So specifically, what we got to look forward to, you're the one who did all that mentoring and all that work with a cohort of 100 teenagers. That's right. So in the summer of 2023, we ran a cohort, a project of 100 young people, which was designed to be the insurance industry time machine report. And the focus of that project was to essentially say, how might we make insurance the go-to industry for the next generation of talent? So how as an industry are we as insurance going to be engaging young people so that they are actually picking insurance as the industry of choice when they're making their career choices? And so this was really a project to try and sort of draw out insights and what we can do as an industry to try and engage young people differently, to have a different conversation with them, to change up the brand perception. Because let's face it, Young people are not gravitating towards insurance. If they're even aware of insurance, it's not their first choice. It's probably not even in the top 10. They think it's boring, don't they? Exactly. They think it's boring. They think it's a scam. You know, there are lots of perception challenges that we need to get across. So what we're trying to do is actually understand from young people how we can solve some of those problems. So what we're going to be hearing today is insights from three of those Sherpies. So we call our young people Sherpies when they join our projects. So we're going to be hearing about three of the ideas that came out of that project which we think are really, really interesting ideas for how we could engage young people differently. A link to the report will be in the podcast notes. But that's enough from us oldies. I'm going to come back to Dan after the Sherpies have spoken, but now let's meet Chelsea Abili and hear her idea. 
Chelsea, welcome to The List of Insurance. Hi, thank you for having me. Why don't you introduce yourself? Tell us a bit about yourself. Well, hi, my name is Chelsea and I'm 19 years old. I currently study media and communications at Leeds University. A bit about myself, I was born and raised in Ireland, but moved to the UK when I was like 12, 13. So I've been here for about six years. And where did you grow up? Um, I grew up in this place called Athen Rye. It's actually in Galway, so outskirts of Dublin. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And then when you came over to the UK, where did you come to? Oh, I went to Southampton side, so I lived in Hampshire. So why don't you give us your pitch? <laughs> okay, perfect. My pitch is about a concept called InsureFest, which is basically an insurance-based festival. So a festival revolving around the concept of insurance, particularly targeted towards young people, right? This idea we thought would appeal to young people because we wanted to link it to TikTok. So we wanted it to be hosted by TikTok influencers in particular. Right. Okay. So someone who's got hundreds of thousands of exactly, followers. Exactly. Exactly. Hey, I've just got into insurance. Exactly. Know how cool it was. Blah, exactly. Blah, blah. And what? And then you have music. We'd bands have, playing. We have like music. We'd have band playing. We'll have stalls and polls. We'll also have like interactive sort of like experiences, like escape rooms, virtual reality experiences revolving oh, cool. around insurance. Targeted towards and would you young get people. insurance companies to kind of sponsor yes, the stalls we around, the, around the periphery we would. of it? Every stall would have an insurance firm or organization running it, particularly to target young people and speak to them about things in the industry. But we want to look at it from an innovation perspective. So we want young people to see how the insurance industry can be innovative. For example, in the music festival aspect, we want music insurance people to be involved. And after you hear the band playing, the insurance people will speak to you about how music is incorporated within insurance. Because if they had to innovate, they did a special scheme in the UK that was um, when we had the unlock down. And obviously the poor old mm. music industry was just yeah. totally flat on its back, trying to get it back on its feet. Mm. It was, they actually did a government scheme to do special insurance, but there was all the people around here in this in, in Lloyds of London who were organising that and all the brokers and people that actually organised it. So, oh, yeah, wow. I mean, people wouldn't, obviously it wasn't front page news. It was a really helpful thing. So it was, it was a really good example of insurance actually exactly. doing good. Exactly, exactly. Getting those people back into work. And obviously they paid out all those claims as well, which is a massive amount. They paid out a huge amount. It was probably one of the biggest things they've had to pay out because obviously we weren't expecting it. Anyway, how did you get that idea? Well, for me, I just realised that young people literally don't care that much about the insurance industry. <laughs> and we're enough. working on a super squad revolving around how we can make the insurance industry more appealing towards young people. So our job was to come up with ideas on how to grab their attention, basically. And for me, I thought a festival would be perfect because I love festivals. And during the summer, me and my friends love to go out. We love to stay in like the fields with like all our people and just have a good time. And we realized that insurance industries and insurance organizations, they tend to try and come to us. Like they try to come to our schools, they try to come to our corporations, our workforce. It's like, you know, when you're in school and yeah. you'll have someone come and speak so to it's you. It's very formal. Very, very formal. But we realized we wanted it from an informal perspective. So we wanted them to basically meet us where we are rather than, you know, them coming to us. You know, That's good. We'll come to them basically by being at the festival. That makes a ton of sense. So what about you personally, before you did the Super Squad, what did you know about insurance? Absolutely nothing. It was definitely never... Uh, organization I thought I'd ever want to pursue or an industry in general. No, no, but all. other than you, you know, that people have car insurance. Exactly. And, and that's it. Like my mom, she would be calling them and complaining and about how long they take yeah. on the phone. <laughs> it's negative. You should very, do. very yeah. negative perception. Or you had travel insurance and you lost your suitcase and they never paid up or it always took so long to get the money and all that kind of stuff. That's what I mean. And, but yeah. what about now? Now that you've done this, what do you feel? I definitely see it from another perspective. I definitely realise that like, like for example, I never thought of music as something that could be insured. Like, do you know what I mean? Like nowadays everything's moving towards the digital side. So like phones, technology, VR, like that's something I'm quite interested in. So now I realise that the insurance industry plays a role in all of these things. So now I can actually consider it more as a career of choice in the future because I'm someone who wants to be a journalist. So I can somehow incorporate that in. I can write for an insurance firm, which is something I never thought about. No, exactly. Well, yes, who knew that you're talking to someone who is an <laughs> who insurance exactly journalist? Does that. <laughs> that it actually, yeah, there's a job for everybody, yeah. There really is. So would you consider it? I would. Yes, I definitely would. Well, I'm really, really pleased with Chelsea Beely. Thank you so much for chatting. No worries. A music festival. Now, that's much more exciting than a talk in a school gym. And it's great to hear how the Super Squad has really opened Chelsea's eyes to the fact that insurance can make fun things happen. Now it's Aman Patel's turn to give us his idea. Aman, welcome to The Voice of Insurance. Thank you for having me. Why don't you tell me a bit about yourself? My name's Aman Patel. I'm a 17-year-old, first year in college. I was born and raised in Leicester and I have a wide range of hobbies that really relate from anywhere such as weightlifting and boxing right up to poetry and writing books. What are you studying? 
I study economics, politics, and accounting. Wow. Tell us your pitch. My pitch is the Route 16. Essentially what it is, is that we've taken students fresh off of their GCSEs over the summer holidays, and these students work under the insurance industry. From this, they learn so many skills because the insurance industry is so fluid, so flexible. There are jobs in advertising, law, there's accounting. There's always so many different things within just the insurance industry. There's a huge bubble, really. And in the Route 16, we teach students these skills through web seminars and a whole wide array. So what exactly is it? It's a kind of work experience scheme. It's a work experience scheme, yes. Presumably it's when you're 16, you've yeah. done your GCSEs, which for any non-UK listener is the exams that UK students do around the age of 16. And that's the last time before you start to really specialise. After 16 in the UK, you go on to, to specialise and you narrow things down to three or four subjects. So it's kind of a crucial summer, isn't it? When people are kind of, of course, um, yeah. you know, they're ending the very, very generalist education. It's about thinking about focusing on their careers. And obviously, if you give up the wrong subjects, it starts to cut off different pathways available to you in the future. Yeah, there's a little almost bubble in that time zone, right? You finish your GCSEs and I saw it with me and saw it with all my peers. We knew we had college over the horizon after the summer holidays, but we wanted to do something now, you know? Over the summer holidays, we had that ambition to try and get some sort of work, independence. There's something there which not only me, I'm sure even maybe you could relate. And I wish to give that through Route 16. Sorry to interrupt in mid-flow, but this is just a reminder that you could be advertising right here, right now, and getting your message directly into the ear of key decision makers in the insurance industry. And you'll be doing it while they're absolutely in listening mode. The podcast is the medium of the future, and so is audio advertising. Contact me on mark at thevoiceofinsurance.com and I'll do everything I can to get you started. So this would be like a paid internship mm. over that last summer holiday before you come back to do further education. Precisely. Did you know anything about insurance before you got into the super squad? I had no clue about anything. The only thing I really heard about insurance was its negative rep. It really doesn't have the best reputation, especially, you know, even when I ask people about it, you know, just for fun or something, if I'm talking about my experience with the super squad, most of the time they kind of stay away from that because the reputation isn't exactly the best. And now you've done it, has your view of the industry changed? My perception has changed completely. Honestly, the industry is beautiful. It's very diverse. It's very colourful. It's something in which I think a lot of people, especially my age, should really consider going into. Because as I said before, there isn't just a fixed pathway when you go into the insurance industry. You can take many walks of life to get into it and to manoeuvre around from it, whether you're studying languages, um, something more mathematical based or STEM based, even law based. There's so many different routes through it. And because of its flexibility, I think every single student should try and take insurance as an industry which they can get into and that they probably should get into. Yeah, there's a real variety of skills that people probably aren't aware of. And some of it's just good communications, you know, and obviously brokers are just good at talking and convincing people of doing things that they don't necessarily want to do. And lots and lots of people, whilst obviously there's mathematics and statistics at the fundaments of, of it, but actually a lot of people, they kind of leave that to someone else. And as long as they know where they're trying to aim for in a negotiation, they're just good at negotiating. They don't necessarily know the numbers that well. So sounds like you quite fancy a career in insurance yourself. 100%. Before starting the Super Squad, before learning anything about insurance, it was never in the box. It was never in my head to go into insurance. Now, after seeing how flexible it is, how beautiful the industry really is, honestly, it's definitely up there for an industry which I would love to break into. Great. Well, thanks so much. Thank you very much for having me. I don't know about you, but I would never have expected a young person to describe insurance as beautiful. Aman shows the huge value that can be created by properly funded outreach work and the attractiveness to many people that paid internships offer. Relatively small sums that we might take for granted can provide a very meaningful incentive to a 16-year-old. Now let's hear from Funta Onle Rewaju. Funta, welcome to Voice of Insurance. Thank you. Why don't you tell us a bit about yourself? Okay, my name is Funta Onle Rewaju. I'm 15 and I still go to secondary school. I have two sisters. I have a lot of hobbies. Like my friends literally call me the jack of all trades because I do a lot of stuff. What's your favourite hobby? Basketball. I love basketball. Like people will be like, I'm too short to play basketball, but I'm actually better than them. 
<laughs> that's the voice like. Well, it's good. If you've got a low centre of gravity, you can be more manoeuvrable, can't you? Yeah. So do you play in a team? Yeah. And they're a good team? Yeah, it is a good team. It is. <laughs> and where are you from? I'm from Nigeria. I relocated to the UK about a year and a half ago. I live in Leicester, Leicester City. It's so nice there. Tell us your pitch. So my pitch is about like a reality game show for teenagers. Because I know that like, we love to have fun. Myself, for example, I love to have fun. And I just randomly told of that, just a reality game show, insurance reality game show. Would it be fun enough if it was about insurance? Was yeah. it kind of okay to learn and be, have fun at the same time? Or Yeah, because like our memories seem to like remember stuff like when we have fun. I don't know how to explain it. So like moments that we have fun, our memories retain those more and we can remember them easily. So if you're having fun and you're learning at the same time, you're technically going to remember everything. And then what sort of things will they do on the game show? So the game is like a bunch of teenagers split into groups. They're going to be given like a sum of money. They could invest it into items that will help them in particular games that they're going to play within the show. And to be honest, I'm still crafting this idea yet. It's not fully crafted yet. Oh, they could sort of start with some money and then try yeah. and unsure things and yeah. see if it blows up or not. Yeah. And if they end up with any money at the end, then they win. Yeah. That should be really good fun. But I think you've already explained what it's all about for how that would work for your generation. So, it's, so the idea is because that is how your generation really likes to learn by more storytelling, having fun, rather yeah. than just reading a textbook. Articles are no no for me. Yeah. I must, I must remember when my son was doing his um, driving theory test, I was thinking of getting the old fashioned book, you know, the, 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 like the highway code and get to read that. That's how I would have done it. But he didn't do it that way. He just, he got an app on his phone. It was all multiple choice questions. He didn't mind getting them all wrong. He would get them all wrong at the beginning. And he never even read the book at all. He just did all the possible questions you could get asked. And after about two days, he got them all 100% all the time. Yeah. And okay. then he went down to the test center and he, and I said, are you, sure, are you sure you're not going to bother reading the actual book? And he's like, no, it didn't matter. <laughs> so it definitely worked. So it worked for him anyway. Yeah. And what did you know about insurance before you started this? So like, I knew a little bit about insurance because my dad was a, like an accountant in an insurance company. Oh, really? Yeah. Did you ever talk to him about it? No, well, not really. I used to like hear him talk about stuff like that, but not really deep into insurance, only the car insurance, house insurance. Those yeah. are the limits to what I knew. And now you know more about it. What do you think about it? It is a really good thing because like, you can't have anything in the UK logistically, you need insurance for basically everything. Even some ways we don't even see that we need insurance, but it is there. So we have to involve in everything we do. Yeah, brilliant. And well, actually, there's a big connection with Nigeria because this is a global insurance place. So like Nigerian airlines and stuff will buy their insurance yeah. here and those big oil companies and all sorts, and all sorts of Nigerian corporations are going to be buying insurance internationally in the international market. So I, I'm not sure if you knew that. So you could get some Nigerian connections. Even if you some like career wises, every like major career needs insurance. So like for me that wants to be a pilot now, I definitely need to know about insurance. Like oh, you do. Yeah. I need insurance. And this has been a great opportunity for me and it's been easy. And I just need insurance in six yeah, weeks. Pilots are need insurance because if they become ill or if, say, for example, they suddenly develop a heart condition, then that's career ending because you can't have a pilot who's suddenly going to have a heart attack while you're on a massive flight to Australia and you've got 500 people on board. You know, you can see why they have this really quite expensive insurance for their protection because it will, means they have to retire. So that gives them a big payout. So you would definitely need insurance if you were going to be a professional pilot. Yeah. So you definitely think about a career in insurance now yeah. you've done all this? It's basically already linked, automatically linked. I can't even escape it. <laughs> You're going to do it. You're going to go for it now. Yeah. Well, welcome. Anyway, I must say it won't be boring and there's a lot you can do and, and it's global as well. So you could be doing business all over the world. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Making an insurance game show sounds like a great idea. And there's that theme again. It's clear we should be telling young people our message when they're having fun and actually doing fun things, rather than expecting them to read about us, and definitely not when they're at school and probably being forced to attend a careers meeting. I really hope you enjoyed the pitches from our Sherpees. Now it's time to close this episode off by going back to Dan at Startup Sherpas. 
The Sherpa's worked with lots of other sectors, and I wanted to get his perspective on how insurance was doing relative to other potential employers that it is competing with for young people's attention. Over to Dan. Dan, I want to pick your brains on behalf of the insurance industry. You work with other sectors, and that's always great. It's a good chance for us to measure ourselves up against them. Mm. So how are we doing? Um, now you've done a couple of, what do you call it? A, super squads. A super squad. That was, a, yes. it was on the tip of my tongue. And it was something, Startup Sherpa super squad. Absolutely. So you've done super squads with other sectors. Do you think there are any pointers that the insurance industry could pick up from other sectors that are doing it better? So obviously there are some sectors that are naturally going to have talent gravitating towards them. I suppose with someone like banks, everyone knows that bankers have money because they, that's where you yeah. money. That's it. You know, there's a reason why there's a term that young people use, which is called getting bank. Mm -hmm. You know, it's because they think if they go into banking, they're going to get paid really well. I think what young people don't realise is that actually there are roles in insurance that pay better than being in banking and actually provide a far better quality of life and have a far better impact. So I think a lot of the challenge for insurance is around perception. Insurance is one of those industries that's just a, one of the best kept secrets. Once you get into insurance, you realise how fascinating it is actually how impactful it is, because it is one of the things that really makes the world turn. You know, we shoulder the risk of the world. So every impact that we're sort of having is being carried by insurance. Yeah, it's only when you try and live without it, you suddenly realize that suddenly nothing you, yeah, really works. You really, exactly. And I think young people don't see that, they don't get it. And we have one of these ideas, which is meet young people where they are. We call it Fight Club. So when we're launching a new squad, we, we say, look, let's take a Fight Club approach, which is the first rule of Fight Club is don't talk about fun. <laughs> so we say the first rule of introducing young people to an industry is don't talk about the industry, talk about things that they care about. And young people care about climate. They care about their local community. They care about their prospects for jobs. So let's actually focus our attention on helping them solve some of those challenges. And actually, let's be seen as an industry as the catalyst for change. Because I think once people see that as the catalyst for change, and you know, obviously we're here at the amazing Lloyds of London building, but to get here, we've had to come through the Extinction Rebellion protesters. And it just shows that it's are, important, isn't it? It's important. They wouldn't be protesting outside of the thing. What we do here is important. Exactly. Exactly. And, and, you know, young people are far more conscious of that than we ever were. And if we show that we're actually helping young people solve those problems and actually being a real catalyst for making that change, then it's going to start shifting the perception of us as an industry. Dan, thank you so much for your time. This is brilliant. Thank you, Mark. Pleasure to be here. Thanks very much to everyone who made this episode happen. I hope you found it as interesting and inspiring as I did. Young people may not know we exist, and even if they do, they may have a negative perception of us. But it's good to know that a little bit of effort can change those perceptions for the better, even to the point where we might be described as a beautiful industry, or at the very least, an essential one that offers a vast array of interesting and rewarding career paths. I don't know about you, but this has left me feeling a lot more optimistic about the insurance industry's long-term future. If you're in the industry, make sure you get involved. There are lots of links in the podcast notes. And if you're lucky enough to be young and wondering what to do for a long and fulfilling career that can apply all your skills, add a few more, and open your eyes to problem solving on a global scale, do consider giving insurance a try. Thanks for listening. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, don't forget to subscribe or leave a like or a review or recommendation on whatever podcast platform you used to access this programme. These really help get the word out. Before we go, just a quick reminder that advertising slots are available here and in other places in the Voice of Insurance podcasts. Podcasting is the fastest growing medium and attracts a high quality audience of key decision makers. It's also an intimate medium where you, the listener, are right in the room with me and the interview subjects. Needless to say, that means it's a great way of getting your message out directly to an audience because you know you've got their full attention. It's also very cost effective. So get in touch with Mark at thevoiceofinsurance.com to find out how you could be speaking directly to the industry. The Voice of Insurance is produced in association with Advantage Go. Release your underwriters to underwrite with Advantage Go's underwriting platform. Voice of Insurance is produced by me, Mark Gagan. Music was written by Anna Gagan and produced by Carlos Gagan. Check out more podcasts and written comment pieces at www.thevoiceofinsurance.com <laughs>